Hi everyone, my name is Casti and I'm the data lead for Gemma. Today I want to talk to you about four things. What have we done with pre-training data for Gemma 1 and Gemma 2? What are some of the challenges we've faced with what we've done so far? What's next for Gemma 3 and beyond? And how can you, as community users and developers on top of Gemma, get involved in this data lifecycle and help us build the best open source models? So let's get started. We released Gemma 2 in three model sizes. We released a 2 billion parameter model trained on 2 trillion tokens, a 9 billion parameter model trained on 8 trillion tokens, and a 27B model trained on 13 trillion tokens. In each of these model sizes, we curated a specific mixture of data to ensure that we had adequate coverage over different domains of information and that we were bringing the best out of our data to ensure that we were releasing the strongest models. And this brings us to our data lifecycle. How do we at Gemma curate the right data mixture to train on? How do we ensure that we're creating a mixture of data that will represent and have the knowledge and information that you as end users are interested in? We start our data lifecycle with selection. We need to select data. We need to make sure that it's compliant. We need to quality filter. And then we need to evaluate. Starting with data selection. With Gemma, we're a text-only model, which is predominantly trained on web-based data. We train on both English and multilingual content, as well as specific math and STEM content, as well as code. When we select new data sets, we want to make sure we're covering new domains, we're introducing new content and information to our models. In summary, we predominantly have English, multilingual, STEM, and code information. Once we've selected a data set, we need to make sure that we're ready to train on it. And the first thing that we do here is compliance filtering. Gemma is an open source model. This means that we're releasing our models to end users and giving you the full capabilities to do whatever it is that you want to do with Gemma. We need to make sure that we train on safe data to reduce the risk of our models outputting harmful or offensive content. In order to do this, we extensively filter our training data to be as compliant as possible. This process starts with removing content which is personally identifiable or any other sensitive information. We additionally filter for child sexual abuse material. Across all of our compliance filtering, we're looking to remove harmful, violent, and offensive content because we want to make sure that our end users are having a positive and an enjoyable experience of developing on top of Gemma. In summary, we're removing any content that we think will degrade end users' experience because we want to make sure we are developing the safest open source models that we can. Once we've compliance filtered data, we reach the point of quality filtering. Quality filtering is essential because we predominantly train on web-based data. As many of you have searched the internet, seen different pages, the quality of web data varies drastically. We need to make sure that we're removing spam, that we're extensively cleaning our data so that we are training on the highest quality subset of tokens that we can. In addition to cleaning data, we want to improve the format of the data that we're training on. This includes deduplication of content, both within sources and across sources. We predominantly train on high quality tokens because we want to improve the breadth and depth of our, knowledge, of our model's understanding. We do simultaneously train on a small subset of low quality data to ensure a robustness to spelling errors, typos, and grammatical mistakes that users may encounter when prompting Gemma. Now that we've compliance filtered our data, we've quality filtered, we're at the point where we want to evaluate, how does this data do? Is it introducing new content? Is it helping to improve our performance? Is it giving us something that we didn't have before? In order to evaluate our data, the first thing that we do is we run ablations. Ablations are small scale training runs with the purpose of evaluating the effectiveness and evaluating what's the right weight of a data set. How much of a particular data set do we want to include in training? As we're evaluating ablations, we're looking across perplexity and benchmark evals. These are domain specific evaluations where we can examine the improvements of introducing new data sets and how does this affect our ability to answer questions here. We measure how we improve throughout ablations. So throughout the course of training, how do we improve over time? And how, do we, how does new data help us to improve on these things? 
Our data life cycle is something that we have to go through several times in curating our final mixtures because we not only need to look at individual data sets, but we want to look at data across domains. How much English data do we want to train on? How much multilingual? How much STEM? And how much code? Throughout our data life cycle, there are several challenges that we encounter. The hardest thing to begin with is how do we evaluate ablations? How do we make sure that we're identifying a signal that we've seen? How do we know if mixture A really performs better than mixture B? We really need to be sure that we're robust to noisy benchmarks and that we're not just seeing, OK, I improved slightly, so this must mean that this data mixture is much better. Take MMLU as an eval, for example. MMLU scores A, B, C, D. Random choice would be 25%. If I see a data mixture improving from 24 to 26%, you might think, oh, this is great, but you're just getting slightly better at guessing. The second challenge that we have here is scaling. We run ablations on small models. We run ablations for large models. We need to make sure that we're scaling the data mixture that we're training for each of the different model sizes that we're releasing. The third large challenge that we have here is identifying and sourcing new data sets. Sourcing new data is really hard because there's domains that we're not aware about that we might want to train on, and identifying and sourcing high quality content here is very difficult. Across all of these challenges, we're simultaneously still trying to ensure that we are training on high quality data, that we're training on compliant data. As we think about Gemma 3 and beyond and what's next for the Gemma family of models, we want to make sure that the models that we're releasing continue to get better, that we have more knowledge, expertise, and understanding of different concepts. And this is where all of you enter. As an open source community, we want to understand what are your experiences developing on Gemma. Where is Gemma performing well? Where is Gemma underperforming? Where do you have questions, niche domains that you're interested in training on Gemma, and Gemma doesn't have the knowledge? And what open source data sets have you used? What would be valuable of open data sets that you've used, you've developed, you've built on top of, that could be upsourced and integrated into Gemma? And this is where we want to introduce our community feedback form. We want to hear from you as developers, what is your experiencing developing with Gemma? Are there niche knowledge gaps that Gemma models do not have right now? Can you tell us about these? We want to know what you're doing with Gemma and how we can help you. And the second thing is, what are the open source data sets that you're aware of that we might not have discovered yet? We want to hear from you to be able to improve our models. Revisiting our data lifecycle, we looked at selecting data. How do we compliance filter? How do we quality filter? And lastly, how do we evaluate this? But we want to change this process. We want to integrate you as community users into our data lifecycle. We want to hear from you as you evaluate the models that we've released externally to know where are they performing well, but more importantly, where are they falling short. We want to know what open source data sets that you have that you've seen before that could be valuable for us to train on. Thank you. <laughs>